Now then YouTube, I am the Toughman and welcome back to some more 999. It's uh, It's been okayly received, you know it's not been absolutely massive on my channel but it has been okayly received and to be honest I enjoy this type of game guys, I really really do enjoy this type of game so I'm just going to continue on with it regardless. And uh, this is part 4 guys, part 4 we're in the central staircase talking to Prince here who says no, I'm sure they go somewhere, otherwise what point would there be? And I, I've got to, I, I hope that I can remember all the voices, because it was like a week ago I actually recorded the previous three parts. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> and uh, we can open them. Well, two of them at least. Four and five, yeah. And we're stuck with this challenge, of which we've got to get nine people through these two doors. Yet you can only get five uh, between five and three uh, people in them both. So what happens to the other one person that we're uh, with the, that's there? You know what I mean? We can't get all nine through. I don't think. Oh, mind you, no, it said between three and five, so we could get five and four through if we could. That is. Oh, that actually tallies up with the doors. You mean the numbered doors? All eyes turn towards the doors with the numbers on them. The atmosphere in the room grew tense. Uh, hey, wait a minute. I think it said earlier, but I, I don't think we should do that. The dancer moved in front of the doors as if to block them. We'd have to be crazy to open these doors. If we do that, we're doing exactly what Zero wants us to do. Suddenly, everyone began to speak at once. <laughs> Just like that. I agree. I don't. That's a terrible idea. We should keep going. We should stay here. We don't have any other way to open these doors. Oh no. We should have a chub, a cup of tea, biscuits. We'll be fine. We should just wait. Someone's bound to come after and find us. We don't have time for that. We ain't got time for that. In eight and a half hours, the ship's going to sink. Wait, hang on a minute. What? That doesn't make any sense. It was nine hours uh, from nine o'clock, was it not? So that was six a.m. and then the time went to twenty past ten because I was too busy looking around the place. So surely that's a, a misjudgment of time there. The clamor of voices made it next to impossible to determine who was saying what. Their arguments grew more and more intense until people were shouting and screaming at one another. Junpai had remained silent. But at last, he could take no more. Hey! Shut up! They fell silent, and all eyes turned towards Junpai. He felt each stare burning into him, but he refused to flinch. Before we try and decide where we're going to go, there's something else we ought to do. What's that? We need to exchange information. We don't know anything about each other. I want to know who you guys are. So come on, let's have, let's sit down and have a council meeting here. My name's Jumpai and I am an alcoholic. <laughs> you got better things to do with your time, really. Eight and a half hours. Let's get to know each other. Who are you? Where you came from? Why you ended up here? Don't tell me you aren't curious too. They were silent. Some of them looked the other way or bit their lip, or crossed their arms and stared at the ceiling. But one of them spoke up. It was Acne. I agree. I think Jumpy is right. Jumpy? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm talking about him. I just call him Jumpy. His name is Jumpy. She pointed toward Jumpy. We're childhood friends. We went to the same elementary school. Wait! Stop! Don't tell us stuff we didn't ask you about! Zero's probably watching us right now! What you gonna do if he's listening in? Would that be bad? Hell yeah, would! We don't know it's we don't know how much that bastard knows about us. Ooh, swearing going on here. Maybe you just picked up a bunch of random people to kidnap. 
If that is the case, then it'd be dangerous for us to let him know too much. If Zero knows who we are, he could come after if could go after our families. Maybe he'd tell us he had Maybe he'd tell us he had him to get us to do stuff, you know? But we still need to know what our names are. It's gonna be hard to talk to each other if we don't have names. Alright. Then why don't we have code names? To him, apparently, it seemed like the obvious solution. Code names? Yeah. We'll each pick something. Like, I'll be seven. Seven? Why are you seven? It seemed a fair question. That must be the door he came out of. The mountain stuck out his left arm. Because this bracelet says number seven. Oh, I get it. Yeah, it's a good idea, man. He smirked. Alright, I'm gonna be Santa. Any of you chumps know Japanese? No? Well, Sen means three, so I'll be Santa. You know, like Santa Claus fits, don't you think? Well, you got no beard, fella, and you're not exactly chubby. Then your bracelet number. Yeah, it's got a three on it. Good job, Grandpa. Just like the mountain had done, Silver thrust out his left hand. Sure enough, the face of this bracelet read three. Very well then. I'll go next, shall I? My bracelet number is one. Given that, I think Ace seems appropriate. I'll be Lotus then. As I'm sure you all know, it has eight petals. No, didn't know that. Which means, of course, that my bracelet number is... Seventeen! Oh, the shock! Eight! <laughs> I would appreciate it if you would call me Snake. Solid Snake. My bracelet number is two. Since Ace has chosen cards, then I choose dice. Snake eyes, clearly. Which is particularly relevant, given that I am blind. Is he blind? What the fuck? Blind? Really? He kept his eyes closed during their entire ordeal, which had, just, which had suggested something strange, but to hear it said so casually, it was something of a surprise. Everyone seemed a little nervous at the Prince's proclamation, but no one seemed to know how to react to it. There was no one person, however, who didn't seem surprised in the least. The girl with pink hair. Oh, there was one person who didn't seem surprised. I want to be Clover. You know, like a four-leaf Clover. Good luck, right? Looking almost bored, she held out her left hand. The face of her bracelet showed the number four. They'd come around to jump high. He held out his bracelet. Oh, Alright. My number's five, so my code name is going to be... Why have one? It's not that there's any point to it now. The dancer cut him off in mid-sentence. I mean, we all know your name already. You're Junpai. Oh, oh. They all nodded. Akane stepped forward, nervously. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Let me know in the comment section if I'm not. Then you should all be call me by my name too. Because, I mean, it, it doesn't seem... It doesn't seem fair to Jumpy. You're thinking it's not cool for you to hide your name after you told us this? Akane fidgeted awkwardly. Junpai decided he had to do something. What's your bracelet number? It's six. She hesitated for a moment, then held out her left hand. As she'd claimed, the bracelet's face showed a six. Junpai looked at it for a moment and thought. Alright then, why don't we call you June? June? Yeah, you know, it's the sixth month of the year. So you're June. Jumpy. Akane ne kneaded her hands and looked up at Jumpy uncertain. He smiled back at her reassuringly. Are you good with that? She thought about it for a few more minutes, then seemed to come to a decision and gave Jumpy a small nod. 
Their names decided, Junpai ran over them quickly in his head. One was Ace. Two was Snake. Three was Santa. Four was Clover. Five was Junpai's number. Akane was six, and Junpai had given her the codename of June. Seven was Seven. <laughs> and eight was Lotus. That meant that eight of them, including Junpai, had revealed their bracelet numbers. But there was still one person left. He was a man with glasses and hair like a bird's nest. He hadn't said anything since they'd met on the stairs, and he didn't look like the sort of person who was inclined to conversation. His skin was pale, his breathing was heavy, and he was soaked with nervous sweat. His behaviour seemed very suspicious, or perhaps simply emotionally unstable. Difficult to tell. However, whatever the case, it seemed clear that he had only a fingertip's worth of a grip on his sanity. The girl with pink hair, Clover, walked up to him slowly. She put her hands on his hips, on her I put hit. What? She put his hands on her hips? Oh my god, what's she, what's she after? She put her hands on her hips and eyed him suspiciously. What number are you? He didn't answer. His bloodshot eyes twitched from person to person and his breath came in hot pants. His breath actually dressed itself in hot pants. That is fantastic. That is the best breath I've ever known. Hey, I'm talking to you. The man licked his dry lips with a shaking tongue and spoke with a voice like old paper. Isn't it obvious? Fuck me, I'm Scottish. There are nine people here. Uh, uh, and you know numbers one through eight are. Ah, I'm the only one left. So you're, you're nine? Yeah. He extended a trembling arm. The bracelet did indeed say nine. Clover looked at it contemptuously. What's your code name? Code name? What do you want us to call you? We all made up names. You should too. I don't need one. Why not? Be because I'm not going to stay here. With you. He took a shuddering breath and exhaled. Clover looked at him with something very much... Let me yeah, say that again. Clover looked at him with something very like disgust. You've got some sort of plan? I do. You, what's that? Y you sure you want to know? Yeah? Alright. Let me show you. I'm gonna do this. I. <laughs> I uh... What's this plan then? By the time they realised what he was doing, it was too late to stop him. The man's body moved like a snake's. In the blink of an eye, he slid around behind her and wrapped his arm under her waist. I hope so. Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing, man? Silver Santa. Silver Santa. It sounds like a bloody new kind of uh, superhero there. Leapt forward towards Clover and the ninth man. He was halfway there when... Stay back! Suddenly the man's hand dove into his pocket. It came back out with a knife. A pocket knife. He held it to Clover's pale, quivering neck. If you get any closer... I'll cut her open. Santa skidded to a halt. He snarled at the scrawny man with a knife and he gritted his teeth. Yeah, that's right. The man's smile was neither friendly nor reassuring. Sweat poured down his neck, soaking the collar of his shirt. Clover, are you alright? The prince, Snake's voice sounded oddly concerned. Yeah, I'm fine. Her voice shook, making her words even less convincing. What the hell are you trying to do? I, I told you. This is my plan. I have to remember who Seven is now. Who's Seven? It's a mountain, isn't he? What are you gonna do to her, you sick son of a bitch? Don't worry. I'm not gonna do anything to her. 
If she just does what I tell her to her, then I'll let her go. He started to move backwards slowly, keeping his grip on Clover. Keeping their distance, Junpai and the others followed. Eventually, the man reached the wall. He gave a start as his back touched it, then glanced quickly, then glanced around quickly and spoke. Verify. Huh? The left. Look on your left. Do you see the device on the wall? Place your hand on the scanner panel around the, the, the round part. What if I don't? The man's nostrils flared. And he looks like he was about—he was about to choke. Are you an idiot? What do you think? I could slit you through it right now. <laughs> this, this guy with a Scottish accent—it just fits. It just absolutely fits. I'll kill you if I have to. All I need is your bracelet. Just do it, Nike. Do it now! He pressed the knife against Clover's neck, hard. Slowly she stretched her left hand out towards the device. Her back was to it, and she had to feel around for a moment before she found the circular panel. It made a cold, electronic noise in the display above her hand, and Asterisk appeared. So that's how it works, Junpai thought to himself. By placing one's palm on, the ninth, on what the ninth man had called the scanner panel, the user's bracelet would be entered into the device. Should you total the numbers on your numbered bracelets, and find that it is the digital root of that number is equal to the number of that door, the door will open. Junpai shifted his eyes to the door itself. The number on it was five. The ninth man seemed to know a little more about the device's operation than he should. He had known ex had, how had he known exactly what to do? Good, good. Now you're done. N next. His bloodshot eyes crept from person to person until finally, they stopped on Lion, which is Ace. You right? You're the one with the number one bracelet, right? Yes, I am. So. Then you're next. Just verify your number like this little brat did. What are you doing? Do it. Don't you care what happens to her? Okay, okay, just calm down. Ace held up his hands, palms out. The ninth man jerked his chin towards the device. Slowly, cautiously, Ace moved towards the device. After what seemed like an agonizing eternity, he reached it. Now, verify. Ace nodded and placed his hand on the scanner panel. The device beeped again and a second asterisk appeared. Now the device had Clover and Ace's numbers, 4 and 1. 4 plus 1 equals 5. The same as the number written on the door. But it wouldn't open just yet. Only three to five people can pass through the one-numbered door. The door needed at least one more person. Who would that be? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Get back! His voice shook, but the knife he held to Clover's throat made his words a command. Ace took two, then three steps back. No further! More than that! Go all the way back! Slowly. Ace did as he was told. The ninth man's lips curled into a cruel, twisted smile. That was when Junpai understood his plan. Clover's four and Ace's one added to the ninth man at ninth man's nine. Four plus one equals nine. Four plus one equals nine. <laughs> four plus one plus nine equals fourteen. And then the one plus four equals five. In other words. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you were all so cooperative. Now I can get out of this nightmare. He pressed his own hand against the scanner panel. A third asterisk appeared on the screen. He dropped his hand to the lever on the side of the device and pulled. The 
door opened with a heavy metallic groan. And guys, that's 20 minutes, so I'm going to leave that right there. Next episode, we will find out what's going to happen with the Scottish man, what's going to happen with all the rest of the people, and the fact that we're going to have, have only one door to go through now. Um, I thought that you'd have to let a certain amount of people in, but no, apparently it's uh, between three to five people can open the door, or something like that. Um, I don't know if only five people can go through, but I'm sure we'll find out next episode. So until then, guys, I've been the Tough Man. If you've enjoyed this series, like I am enjoying making it, guys, then please do leave it a like. It does help the series, and it does help the channel as a whole. And uh, I really do appreciate that. If you've got any comments at all, please put them in the comment section. I do read all the comments that I get, and uh, I do try to reply to many of them, as many of them as I can. Um, but anyway, guys, until next time. I've been the Softman, thanks very much for watching, and as always, stay safe.